my work in, on skin bleaching um, in Ghana, particularly what a lot of the women who bleach their skin say, well, the men are out here saying that they prefer light skinned women. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get a man, mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of those ways mm -hmm. that you do what you got to do to attract him. And so for me, again, we focus so much on the women and act like they should know better. And how could they do this? Like the people who are online asking the questions, how could Kim do this? They might be the same music executives who might require an artist to have not only a light skin, but a racially ambiguous woman in their music videos. And, right? You know, date whomever you love and, and be with whomever you love. But I feel sometimes as if black women are being excluded and um, we are not appreciated for who we are and what we bring to the table and our our distinct beauty yes. yeah yeah and I, and I agree with you and I think that's why it's so important for us to you know I, I, I try to go bigger and deeper than the just love yourself because mm -hmm. the question is always what does that look like right. and how so for me you know it's why I do the work that I do in terms of trying to put images out um, beautiful images out of ourselves so that we can see ourselves reflective because I think if there's anything for us to learn from Kim also as women it's that no matter what amount of changing you do like you can change the exterior but how do you feel inside that still reflects we're seeing pain yes we this. are right. Dr. hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in I hope everything is going well with you and that you guys are blessed and um, I just wanted to tell you just to like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you like it. Please, I appreciate all the thumbs up and all the support. But I was, um, I was led to come on tonight. Please forgive me, guys. I am so tired. I've been working practically all day. <laughs> and I am just exhausted. And it's late at night here. So please forgive me. But I was led to, to do this video. It's been kind of weighing on my heart lately about what I, ex I have experienced here, what I've observed here by living in Ghana. Of course, my mom and I have been here for two years now, going on three. And we have, it's been kind of interesting, the colorism that is here in Ghana. Um, I feel that it is something that needs to be talked about. I mean, it's discussed, but this is going to be just my first part. I'm going to get into other parts with the subject matter because I feel that this subject matter needs a lot of attention. Of course, we have our, our colorism in as well, um, coming from the West. I would probably say this is a, a problem that we deal with of being black people all over the world, you know, due to slavery, due to colonization, due to kind of the, the power structure that is here on this world, it, um, it affects your psyche and how we have felt about ourselves as black people. So I'm um, sorry if I'm rambling on, but um, this is a very, very important subject matter. So this is going to be a several parts. So please tune in guys for that. But um, I will say it all started with us moving here and the term of um, being called a brony. Of course, here in Ghana, that's a very popular term that a lot of Ghanaians use to um, talk about or to, um, to describe people from the West. Um, and people, black people from the West, they call us a brony, and especially it's it's a term referred to as being called a white person. And if you're light, like like me, um, they really call you a brony, even more than my mother. Um, they call her a brony too because of the way that she speaks, being from America. But they really call me a brony, and being here, they refer to me as a white woman. And I, it took a while for me to get used to that because I, I don't want to be associated with being called a white woman because I'm not a white woman. I'm very proud of who I am as a strong black female. My mother has raised me that way. So it was something that was very, uh, that I had to get used to. And kind of the skin color thing here is very interesting. It's far, far different from um, being a person from the West, from America, they uh, they view 
a lighter skinned a black person as as white and kind of like their skin color when it comes to being I guess like a milk chocolate or a darker skinned a person it's a totally different thing here and um, like my mother I would refer to I would see her as a like in the states she would be considered kind of going towards a darker skinned woman here she would not be considered that way she would maybe be considered like a, a chocolate which is going towards light skin because the people here are very, very dark. And I would have to say, I've seen the most beautiful people since I have been here. I mean, so much rich colors. We really have to appreciate, guys, how to learn how to appreciate our melanin and what the Most High has given to us. I mean, it is just, it is remarkable. And it goes toward, it goes past skin color, guys. It goes way past that. There is a whole scientific um, mechanism of what we have called melanin and really it's carbon for really for really the scientific property is called carbon and we don't realize it and the people here do not realize it they view um, white people or Asian people or Middle Eastern people as almost like gods even just by observing the interactions of Caucasian people and, and Asian people and other people here with them um, and the Ghanaians who respond to that, they are just like, that's what they aspire to be. So when they look at somebody white or somebody such as myself, they, it's almost like they, that's something that they aspire to be, which is, is really sad to me. And so being called that, it really took a while for me to use to. And of course, Ghanaians don't mean anything harm. It's actually, in their eyes, a compliment. But coming from the West, I didn't view it as that. And I just viewed it as like, you know, why are you referring to me that way? I'm black just like you are. I just happen to be lighter skinned. I have two black parents, y'all. I am not biracial or anything. We come in all different types of hues. We come in all different types of colors. So that had abs that has absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, so I um so being here, I've really seen how kind of like the self-hatred that they have when it comes to their physical appearance. And um and I think this is not just a Ghanaian issue. This is an issue that is quite prevalent on this continent. And, you know, when it comes to, like, skin bleaching and, and weaves and, and all this stuff, which I'm getting into in future videos. And really, we need to really look at the psychological problems. I mean, there are women and people that are in their graves from the skin bleaching, skin bleaching and, and doing type of self modifications to yourself to look white. I also know this is very prevalent in Jamaica as well. So um, this is something that is is a scar that's very painful that we really need to to pay attention to. But um, but being here, kind of um, the treatment that I receive by being a lighter skinned person. Uh, is you know I appreciate people being nice to me but I it's a little uncomfortable right. it's a psychological programming that is so prevalent here and even when it comes to billboards and um and it's like all you see is just like a lot of billboards are lighter skinned women or darker skinned men with lighter skinned women so I mean what's the What's the message that is going out there? Oh, okay, well, for men, you want a lighter-skinned sister. Or and for darker-skinned women, oh, they think that that is, you know, the ultimate. That's what you want to be. And um, I, just, I just find it very disturbing, you know, in the way that they view kind of Caucasian people compared to themselves. Shortly after we got here, we met a, we were in a cab, we met a cab driver, older, older Ghanaian gentleman, and his name was George. And I was in the car with my mother and another neighbor of ours at the time, Kiara, and she's from the, um, she's from the states as well. And um, we, for somehow, we got off into talking about this whole Lebroni type of thing, and he was like, he was saying you should be, you should want to be called that, and we were like, why? And he was like, because. Caucasian people are better, they look better, they're smarter, they've done everything, they're just better. So you should want to aspire to be that. And I was like, whoa, it was it was actually kind of sad to hear actually it come from somebody. And he was very honest and I appreciate his honesty, but it really showed 
kind of the, the mental slavery that all of us are in, you know, even not just here on this continent, but other continents as well. Like I said, in America, we go through the same, same thing. But here, I would say it is, I guess you'd say it's more blatant, you know, and kind of it's more in your face, I would say here. So that's a really interesting thing about being here in Ghana because I would have never have guessed this before I, I moved here. I really thought that they were really comfortable in their own skin, you know what I mean? And being, you know, um, being a proud Ghanaian, a proud African, because in America, you're in like a melting pot. You're around all different kinds of people. So, you know, we're used to different looking people. And, you know, we're so mixed up in the States. And so it's a melting pot, but here it's not quite like that. But to see that they have been affected by, um, by the media, because it's really the media and the imagery so much on this on this continent it really it, it was very really shocking to me but um i i wanted to 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 you know just really put out this video because here in ghana even down even down to like the doll aisles we have been down a lot of doll aisles <laughs> in um in in ghana and accra and you see the majority you see a lot of white dolls, blonde, blue-eyed white dolls. And this is what a lot of Ghanaians give to their daughters to play with. And um, we have a friend and he has two beautiful um, little girls. And my mom asked him, what, what kind of dolls do you buy for them? Do you buy them white dolls? Do you buy them black dolls? And he was like, no, I buy them white dolls. And my mom was like, well, how are they going to identify with being a, a, um, a woman of color and a female of color if they play with these white dolls that don't even look like them? And it was, it was kind of interesting because he didn't even look at it that way. He really didn't. And what my mom told him was really food for thought. He was like, I did not, I didn't even realize it until you mentioned it. And from now on, he's saying, I'm going to buy my little girls, black dolls. And that really warmed my heart. It really did. It warmed my heart so much. I was like, that's, that's right. That's what you're supposed to give them to play with. That gives them a sense of identity. And I have to say, these Nana dolls, they are so adorable. If I had a little girl, I would so buy them for her. These new dolls have come out here in Ghana and they are, they're called Nana dolls, and their hair, they have like natural hair, their clothes are so cute, they have like, you know, Ghanaian, African clothes, and they're so stylish, they're so sassy, I love them, they're just really, really cute, and I think the artist Fuse ODG, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but I love the, the work that he has done, because I think that that is a doll line that he is behind, and um, so that is amazing what he has done to give um, girls here kind of like a, a sense of identity, I mean, you're here in Ghana, you're in a in an African country, they don't need to be playing with a whole lot of white dolls. They need to play with dolls that they can identify with as a black female. So that will give them a sense of identity. So, I mean, these dolls are so cute. If I had a little girl, I would, she'd be playing with those dolls. They are, they are really, really cute. So, um, so yeah, but I, I hope I'm not rambling or anything, but I, I wanted to just, to just get this off of my chest. And to, you know, tell my, my brothers and sisters on this continent, be comfortable in who you are. Be comfortable in your own skin. And don't let the media make you feel bad or, you know, whomever to make you feel bad about who you are. And the colorism that exists within our race, we need to, we need to address. Of course, there have been videos and everything, you know, about this subject matter. But I'm getting deeper. <laughs> into this because this is something that we need to we need to discuss as a as a collective both men and women 
of the psychological damages that has happened to both of us. So, so thank you. Thank you so much. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Be blessed. God bless you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.